Okay, I figured you were asking some of the basic uh, functions inside of Bamboo, so let's go ahead and try to do this. First thing you were wanting to know about was how to actually open and put an STL file in. So if you click on this icon right here, it just says Add. And now I can select whatever I want. So let's go ahead and select, you know, we'll just do this 3MF file here, which is the one I originally did for you. So you can see here, we have one of each kind of bracket that you have. Uh, the next thing is you're asking about how you could put like a bunch of on a bunch of them on a plate. So what I could do is do you know copy. So I'm just doing like you know control C and then control V a bunch of times and they're thrown all over the place. All right, see it's kind of a mess here, but what I can do is from here I can go over and I can click on this right here, which is arrange all objects. And you know here's my different op options. I'm going to set a little bit of spacing in here. Who knows if I'll get enough in here or not? But let's go ahead and say arrange. And now it's put them all on the plate. So you can see now it's all arranged here. You're gonna have to look, kind of notice that these are on the edge. Typically, if you put anything that are right on the edge, you're not gonna have a good print. So I'd, I'd maybe move things around a little bit to get them off the edge, but you can kind of see that's how the arrangement goes. All right, so that's the first thing. Get this out of here, go back to what we had. All right, so another thing, uh, supports. So you have a couple different options with supports. So here on the left side, you can see that you're probably going to look at this quality tab is where it's setting. You have support over here on the left. You can say check the box enable support. I always do tree support. I never do the normal. That thing is such a pain in the ass to remove. So I always do tree. So but with tree, if you do auto, it's going to decide for you what should have a support and what shouldn't. And if I say tree auto, we'll just do it so you can see. All right. Um, let's go ahead and slice. You can see that it actually goes over and it fills in all of these under parts that you know you you didn't necessarily want. So in order to get by that, you can say tree and you can say manual instead. And then there's this option, this button right here, which you can just push out also. And now I'm doing painting, so I can say we can say whatever the pin size we want. We'll make this a little bigger so it's easier. I just go over here and just color this in real quick. And now if I slice it. It only put the tree support under this one spot and didn't put it on the other. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense for you. <laughs> All I'm doing right now is just kind of backing up what I did so that way I don't I don't have that mass. All right. All right. So next thing, uh, brim. Sometimes you're gonna have issues with adhesion, um, and you need to put a brim around it. So you know, especially things that are thinner. So you can see like this here is thinner. So sometimes you might have some adhesion issues. This typically doesn't because it's all connected and this has enough meat on it in order to not have that problem. But if you do, you can go here to brims and you can say how many you want across. And excuse me, typically I don't use auto if I'm seeing a problem. I decide, do I want it to be outer inner? Do I want it to be on the outer? So if I say outer only, it's going to put a brim around the outside. If I do enter, then it's going to do just right on the inside. So it'll put it in here, inside the holes, etc. Or I can say outer and inner and it'll go there or just no brim. And that means it won't do anything. So that's that's kind of to help you get um, adhesion. So if you're starting to notice some things peel off in their thin thin areas, that's where a brim is gonna naturally help you. All right, um, last thing I wanted to show you. So if we go back here, this file is not gonna be a good one. So let me get one that actually is a multicolor file that I created. Um, This lid one would work. All right. 
Um, let me get this stuff out of here. All right, so if you look at this lid, on the bottom you can't really tell right now, but there's actually writing under here. I put like DGI and then uh, lenses, lens and filter, because this is a uh, this is the lid to a case that I made that holds all the the, lens, the filters for one of my drones. So if you look at this here now, if, you know when you first put it in, but I know it's multicolor, but it's it just looks like a black thing. The reason why is because every single one of them is using this black PLA and nothing else. So if I go in here and I click on object and I expand this down, now you can see that I have different options. So I can go over and click. So you can see lens filters. So I can go over and right click and say change filament type, make that white. And now it's actually going to print that as white. You know, I could then go over so over the solid, that's the black. I can say I want to make that, I don't know. You can say make it red. And then you can see how it kind of changes that around. And that's how you're going to do your multicolor. With that being said, multicolor is going to be step. It's going to be a step file because you're going to have multiple components inside of that. And so the thing to think about is when you're using Fusion, you're going to then create components inside of your, your normal piece. So like this was just a box lid and I created the components that said lenses filters. Or actually I want to show you, I made a newer one. Um, I wish the date function worked because that would make things a lot better. So version six. this one so this one here I made multiple components so you can see that this actually might kind of be a little better so like this kind of tells you like everything's different colors so from here I, I wanted to do like my whoops wrong button you know, I want my DJI to be white but then I and those are all just because they're all separate components per, by itself but then my lens filters not so that I can say I want to be that to be blue. So now DJI is white, the case is black, and now this is blue. And it's all because these are all different components that I made inside of Fusion. If that doesn't make sense, let me know. But I think those are your basic things. Oh yeah, the other thing you're going to want to know about is you have a couple things. Um, this is if you want to move, but you don't really need, you can just drag it. Um, this one here is for rotations. So let's say that I want to rotate this. I can grab this blue and I can turn it. If I want to rotate it around, or let's say I want to turn it on its side, you know, I can I can go over and go here, but that doesn't always. It's hard to get it completely right, so I just go over inside of here and I I type like 270, and you you'll see that it'll actually mark it. And then if you're seeing something that doesn't look like it's quite flat, like this isn't quite flat, I can just go over and push this button here, which just will auto orient it for me. Or this one here will make sure that it lays it flat. So if it's kind of sitting a little bit cockeyed, so if let's say um, it's just sitting like this and we're like, oh man, that doesn't look good. I can just click this lay on face. And I can say, here's the face I want to lay it on. And it will automatically lay it flat. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, this is if I want to scale it. So if I want to make it larger or not. So let's say that also I'm like, you know, I need to just tweak it just a little bit. So I'll make it. The scale is going to be, um, we'll just say 100.1. So I'm just making it just a, just a smidge bigger. I click that and it's, especially if this uniform is set, it's going to automatically scale out all the way around. Obviously I don't because I made that perfectly sized. So we'll leave that alone. Um, if you want to, if you don't have a bunch of components and you just have one object, you can also, what you can do is you can do like color painting. So if you want, yeah, I can say, I want to make it white. And then now I can go inside here and I can just kind of paint it like this if I wanted to. And now when I slice it, literally the inside is going to have this white run across there. And then I'll still have my component where some of the stuff has changed. But you can see, because I did uh, undo too many times, only a couple things actually changed color. But you can see the painting, I can I can write something. So you can write, Ed is cool inside of here if you want to use like, like a paintbrush. Um... Yeah, I think that's at least some basics to get you the idea of what you want to do. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Oh yeah, one last thing I wanted to show you real quick, because you're doing a bunch of multiple prints, I wanted to kind of help share. This could help speed up your printing or you know, potentially just make it a little more detailed for you. So this is really underrated as far as an option inside of Bamboo Studios. If you 
click on this, you can adjust you know, the quality. You can make it adaptive where it's going to let it decide on itself. So you can notice that on detailed lines, it kind of makes a smaller line, and then the less detailed, it's just making like a 0.28. So it's just a, it's a thicker line, so it's going to help speed up your, pro, your printing process. Um, you can select smooth, which is going to then make the lines thinner. You can see, you know, except for you know the very middle, but then all the top and the bottom, it makes it thinner, which is going to kind of eliminate some of those layer lines you're seeing. Um, so it's it, like I said, it's it's one of those things that. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's kind of a hidden gem as, as far as I'm concerned. So larger prints, I always uh, go to adaptive. So that just helps speed up my print process. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. I almost forgot the most basic thing, you know, the whole purpose for having this tool, uh, how to print. So once you make sure you have everything set up the way you want, so you can see I have all my colors selected. Go ahead and move that where I want it. All you're gonna do is click slice. Always look, you know, after you slice it to make sure that you see it still looking exactly as you would expect it because this is going to tell you. And then select print plate. From here, just go ahead and say, all right, well, you know, your black is sitting in A1, white's in A2, blue is in A4. You can go ahead and make sure to turn your time lapse on, your flow dynamic calibration. I always have that on. I think it's an important thing. Um, it kind of gives you a little bit better print. And then click send and it'll go ahead and send it away. Once you send, it's going to take one moment here. It's going to move you to the next screen. It's got to send it up to cloud, then it's going to go back down to your printer, uh, unless you have a LAN connected only, which I would not recommend. And now you have to push play, but once you push play, you're going to actually see inside of your print bed. Um, all your progress will be sitting here. If you decide you want to pause, stop, etc., it's all right here. So, because I don't need to print this, I'm going to go ahead and push stop. But that should be kind of some basic information for you. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and go through this now while we can. You can kind of make some of your changes. Because remember, we talked earlier about if you want to make it even go ludicrous, you can click here and you can change your speeds. Um, you can use a little slider once the print starts to, to speed it up, slow it down, whatnot. This will turn your lamp on and off. Uh, your fan, you can adjust your temperatures if you need to as you're going. It's going to show you which filament it's connecting to, etc. Okay, that should be it. Enjoy your prints.